Something strange happens when you watch a cyclo rotor drone hover. It looks normal for a moment, then it begins to slide sideways or drift forward without ever rotating its body. It feels like it is moving through the air on invisible tracks. That unusual motion comes from the special way a cyclo rotor produces thrust, and it made me want to push the idea deeper. Today, I want to test what happens at higher inflow speeds by putting new 3D printed rotors on a simple airplane. I will also compare them to a normal propeller and see what this design can truly offer in flight. How the cyclo rotor creates thrust. Before building anything new, I needed to revisit how a cyclo rotor actually produces its force. The blades spin around a horizontal shaft. Each blade changes pitch once each time it travels around the circle. That constant pitch change makes sure the blade always meets the air at a positive angle of attack, which is what allows the rotor to generate useful lift. But this system also brings a built-in weakness. Two points in every rotation create drag without adding real thrust, because the blade orientation is not ideal there. These dead zones reduce the rotor's overall efficiency and make it behave differently from a normal propeller. Now, imagine shifting the thrust direction until the rotor pushes sideways. Air now flows directly into the rotor like it would on the front of an airplane. The leading blades start making forward thrust, while the rear blades add to that push. But the most interesting moment happens at the bottom of the rotor. As it swings forward, that blade acts like a small wing, lifting upward as it creates thrust. If the rotor tip speed matches the airspeed of the aircraft, then the top blade sees almost no inflow at all. It stops dragging the system down and becomes almost neutral. Suddenly, the whole rotor becomes far more efficient. It produces both forward thrust and extra lift at the same time. That makes it extremely valuable for VTOL aircraft that want smooth control through hover, transition, and cruising flight. The idea is simple, but seeing it work in real conditions is completely different, which is why I wanted to test it myself. Building a new easy-to-print rotor. My earlier cyclo rotor was powerful, but very hard to build. The parts needed long machining, careful alignment, and a lot of time. That is one reason the first cyclocopter prototype used only two cyclo rotors and a normal nose propeller. This time I wanted something I could print quickly, replace easily, and test often. I went through several designs before settling on the final version. One of my first attempts was a direct drive rotor. It removed the need for a belt, which helped reduce transmission noise, but it also required a cam system to control the blade pitch. That cam created friction and even produced more noise than the belt. Another design used a belt and kept the blade bolts centered, but the three D-printed arms bent when the rotor spun fast. That bending changed the pitch angle in ways I didn't want and made the rotor unpredictable. After many prints, failures, and redesigns, I returned to a layout close to my original rotor. This time it was smaller and shaped to work with a standard racing drone motor. The belt drive gave it a smoother sound and removed the harsh gear noise that made the first version hard to listen to. All the parts were printed in solid PETG on my Ender 3. Each bearing pressed into its mount with a tight and satisfying snap. The blades were hand cut from foam, holding a small carbon spar down the center. I sanded each blade into a rough airfoil shape. All parts slide onto a 4mm carbon shaft that does not spin. The end plates spin around the shaft, and the shaft itself connects to a servo to rotate the entire thrust vector. The belt gives a 7 to 1 reduction from the 1750 kV motor, powered by a 4 cell LiPo. When the rotor was complete, I felt ready to compare it to a normal propeller and see what the numbers looked like. Bench testing and the strange performance curve. 
I want to say this clearly. My cyclo rotor and the normal propeller are not equal competitors. My rotor is unoptimized. The geometry is different. The math used for propellers does not fit cyclo rotors well. Still, I wanted a general picture of how they behave next to each other. At low throttle, my rotor surprised me. It made more thrust than the normal prop. But as I increased throttle, the rotor's thrust curve flattened. It refused to climb the way a normal prop does. The propeller kept making more thrust as power increased, while the rotor reached a strange plateau. It looked as if something was limiting it, but I did not know what yet. The efficiency plot showed the real difference. For the same power draw, the normal prop produced far more thrust. When I graphed power loading, which shows how much thrust you get per unit of power, the prop again came out ahead. High power loading means efficiency. My rotor fell short in every part of the curve. Oddly, there was a small dip around 30% throttle. That dip matched the same place where the thrust curve leveled off. Something unusual was happening there. After looking at the data and the rotor, I formed a simple guess. The foam blades were bending. At higher speeds, both aerodynamic forces and centrifugal forces increase sharply. Those forces change the true angle of attack of the blades. When a blade bends backward, it needs energy to bend, and it also creates less lift. That means the motor sends out the same energy, but the rotor produces less thrust. The curve now made sense. Even so, that did not mean the cyclo rotor was useless. Many propulsion tools are inefficient in one mode and excellent in another. Helicopter rotors are far better than jet engines at hovering. Jet engines are far better at cruising. The cyclo rotor may have its own strengths that appear in different flight regimes. One area where it already wins easily is sound. The noise is lower, softer, and far less irritating. When I switch between the rotor and the propeller, the difference was clear. A plane using a cyclo rotor would be much nicer to hear overhead. Designing and flying the airplane. With the testing done, it was time for the real goal, putting two cyclo rotors on a simple airplane and seeing if it could fly. I drew a basic layout with the rotors mounted up front. Only after the build did I learn that my design looked a lot like a historic cycloplane that never got off the ground. I printed new blades from lightweight PLA to add stiffness, hoping they would solve the bending issue I saw in the bench tests. I wanted to test them before the flight, but the weather finally gave me one chance to fly, and I did not want to miss it. A friend showed up with his RC car and joked that my strange plane looked cooler, but as soon as I started the rotors, I heard a sharp slipping sound. One of the belts was too loose. The freezing cold air outside made the belt contract and behave differently from when I set it indoors. Even with the slip, the plane lifted off with very little throttle. That shocked me. It took a short roll, rose into the air and held steady. The lift from the rotors was real and strong. I landed to fix the belt and tried again. The second flight ended everything. As the plane accelerated, one rotor shook hard, a blade snapped, then the end plate came loose. Parts of the rotor scattered through the field as the plane dropped quickly to the ground. When I reached it, I found blades, bearings, and printed pieces everywhere. It was not the ending I hoped for, but it was honest and it taught me more than a perfect flight ever would. What the project taught me and what comes next. The crash was painful to watch, but the project still succeeded in its real goal. I learned how the rotor behaves in forward flight, which is something very few people have tested or documented. I learned that blade stiffness is far more important than I expected. I learned that belt tension changes when the weather changes, and that the light foam blades cannot survive high RPM without warping or snapping. I saw how the cyclo rotor behaves at takeoff, in the air and under stress. I also learned that even when the rotor is not efficient, it still has qualities that make it worth studying. 
For now, I plan to take a short break from Cyclo Rotors. I have other projects waiting. But the idea is not gone. My friend Jude is building his own version and showing real progress on his channel. Watching his work gives me hope that someone will improve this design enough to make a stable aircraft. Cyclo rotors may not become the primary propulsion of future airplanes, but I can see them becoming powerful control tools. They offer precise thrust steering that normal propellers cannot match. If engineers continue improving stiffness, weight, and pitch control, the cyclo rotor may find its place in future aviation. So maybe the cyclo rotor will not replace the propeller anytime soon, but that does not mean the idea should disappear. It may only need better materials, stiffer blades, and smarter tuning to reach its full promise. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you think this is a future-ready technology? or does it belong only in experiments? Your ideas shape what I explore next. If you enjoyed this project and want to follow future tests and builds, make sure to subscribe so you do not miss anything. There is still so much to explore, and this journey is only beginning.